Hi. Uh, today uh, we are going to talk about multimeters for those of you who are interested in hardware. If you are not very versed in these things, maybe this will be too much for you, but let's see. I hope most of you will get uh, basic info on this topic, what multimeters are, how to use them, and what to do with them. Hope you'll find it useful. So, what are the multimeters? Uh, these are the devices that measure some basic electrical values, like voltage, like current, and resistance. Uh, for every of th that, those values, uh, you have to use a specific instrument, voltmeter for voltage, ampere meter for current, ohm meter for resistance. But uh, some clever guy thought, okay, I can put all these things into one thing and call it a multimeter and measure everything I need with just one device. And later they added a bunch of other useful or less useful stuff to it and they got today modern multimeters. There are three types of multimeters today, old analogs with scales, digital manual ranging and digital auto ranging. We'll see what's that. This is typical analog multimeter you made have seen it before. You have scale and needle that shows the value when you measure. This is typical modern auto, auto ranging multimeter. And this is what we're going to do today, manual ranging. If you learn to use manual ranging multimeter, you'll know pretty much everything you ever need to know about how to use multimeter in your everyday use. So, uh, these manual ranging multimeters uh, have so-called ranges uh, that you have to manually change. First, we have different functions on this dial. Uh, you have uh, function to measure DC voltages, AC voltages, that's direct current and alternating current. Also DC and AC currents, resistance, uh, transistor gain, frequency, continuity and diode test, and capacitance. Bunch of different stuff, and everything is uh, controlled from here. By turning this knob, you decide what to measure and on what range. First, we'll talk something that is most useful to most of you. It's DC voltage. Uh, you have five different ranges, 200 millivolts, 2 volts, 20 volts, 200 volts, and 1,000 volts. We'll see why we need them. When you measure something you don't know how large is uh, the value you're going to measure, always start from the highest range, in this case, 1,000 volts. If you are sure that value is some, somewhere in some specific region, you can start from there. So let's measure 9-volt battery. Because we know that 9-volt battery is somewhere around less than 20 volts. We can start, start there, but, but for this purpose, let's start from the highest range. So, we connected probes to uh, our bat battery. Uh, we changed the range to 1,000 volts, and we are measuring now voltage, DC voltage, and it shows 9 volts. Okay, that's nice. but. Uh, let's take some more precise measurement and let's give it a notch down to smaller range. 
Now we can see that we got one decimal point. It says 9 volts. 0.4. That's more precise. If we lower the range, we'll get more precise measurement. Now we see that it's 9.39 volts. So that's the voltage of new unused battery. And this is the best possible reading we can get. If you go on lower ranges, we'll get this one. One is uh, indication that you are over range, that a multimeter can't uh, measure such high voltage. B why? Because he has a range of two and 200 millivolts, and that's hard to measure nine volts with. So you must go back to 20 volts and measure it. So, uh, what we are changing here? We are changing uh, accuracy and resolution. But I'll say something more about that. Uh, if we uh, look at specifications of modern multimeters, first you'll see how many bits it has. Uh, this multimeter we are showing now, the yellow one, has three and a half bits. What's that? That means that it can show three whole uh, bits or digits, and first digit can only be zero or one. We call that three and a half bits or digits. Uh, some more uh, advanced uh, multimeters have more bits and uh, they can show more precise values. So you can get three and a half bits, three and four, uh, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half bits. Uh, and you can measure more precise with more bits. And that's not very useful to most of you because that's only for laboratories and for everyday use that's too much. Three and a half bits is what you need. So, we can uh, have uh, 1,999 uh, counts in three and a half bits. So, the smallest value it can show, that's called resolution. And the smallest value depends of, on range that we are using. So, if we're measuring at 200 millivolts, it will, that's the first case, we can show 1.999. So the smallest bit here is 0.1 millivolt, and that's our resolution on this range. As we lift the range, uh, the resolution changes. So at two volts, res resolution is one millivolt, and etc. Why is that uh, important? Well, uh, it's normal. At thousand volts, you don't uh, have to know what's the smallest millivolt you're measuring, but uh, it's enough to say we know it down to one volt. So for smaller voltages, you're having more precision and more decimal points. So, let's take some real measurements. I want to show you how to use multimeter, and this is practical guide. Uh, most of multimeters have three or four inputs, and uh, shown inputs are uh, COM or common, that's where you put a black probe, and other three inputs depend on what you're measuring. 20A is for large currents, A is for small currents, and volt and ohm is for measuring voltage and resistance. When you start to measure, first put this black probe in composition, and you won't move it uh, for any other measurement. That is the common 
uh, probe and all voltages are referenced to it, so you can call it ground or zero volts. For measuring DC voltages, put other probe into most right position. Click the power on and you can measure it, the DC voltages. Uh, if you know what voltage you're going to measure, put your range one higher. If not, start from the 1000 volts. Uh, you have to remember, uh, never, never, never ever change the function while measuring. So, if I'm going to measure some voltage, and decide, okay, I will then measure some resistance. Don't leave your probes in the voltage or you burn something, uh, multimeter or that device that you are measuring. So always lift one probe when you change functions. You can change voltage ranges during the measurement. So from 1000 to 200 to 20, but you can't uh, change from voltage to current to resistance, etc. So you have to think what you're doing, not going too fast. Uh, you have to remember how to measure voltage Voltage is always measured, as I say to my students, like this. Always remember, when you're measuring voltage, always put your arms in front of you, so you can connect parallel to the uh, source that you're measuring. I'll tell you what, why that's important. Because in other measurements, like current and ohms, you can make some big mistakes if you are going to measure in parallel. So, if I have a battery, put one black one on the minus, red on plus, and measure. Uh, you can get also negative voltages for, that's okay, and if you reverse the probes you can also get negative voltages and that's not a problem. You'll get just minus in front of your readout. And this is typical way to measure some voltage source. We have about 12 volts. And remember, always in parallel when measuring voltage. Uh, yep. It, hel it, it, it helps in some cases. I don't know which, but... Uh, next, uh, something you may know is classic uh, PCU, power supply unit for your computer. And I measured some uh, voltages, some uh, DC voltages, and on the left are declared voltages, and on the right what's uh, measured with this multimeter. So, uh, 12 volts, you get 11.68, uh, and for 5, 5.09, and that's okay. It's all under some tolerances, but that's okay. But take a look at that last one, uh, 5 volts for USB, and you get 4.92, and you expect exactly five volts. Uh, nothing can be exactly like stated. Uh, why? Because USB as all other voltages have uh, tolerances and uh, for tolerance for USB voltage is 5%. So if you measure somewhere between 4.75 to 5.25 volts, it's okay. So you, you, your USB don't have to be exactly five volts. And my students usually say the five volt at USB is the most precise source of voltage ever invised by human race. And that's not very true. So let's change to measuring DC current. Uh, when measuring DC current, 
you have to make a break in circuit that you are measuring. You can't just measure in parallel like voltage. You have to make a break and what, what's easy to uh, remember, always put your hands in, in a T. Why? Measure like this, not like this. So, plus goes to one side, minus to other side of a break and current must pass through it. This is schematic, schematic uh, representation. See that uh, there's a break between uh, lamp and battery and that's how you measure current. You can't just put your uh, probes parallel to battery or lamp or your fry something. So, uh, to, uh, to get a positive uh, readout, you have to um, put a red probe to a so positive source of uh, current and black probe where it goes. So, uh, current must go to red and exit to black, otherwise you'll get negative uh, read out. That's okay also. And this is again our poor old battery now with one resistor and we are measuring uh, 9 volts uh, what's, uh, what's the current through our resistor when powered with 9 volts. Uh, we have uh, so, so this little resistor and we are measuring in series, not parallel. And we get about 10 milliamps. So our resistance is somewhere around 800 ohms. Uh, it's important to know uh, how to start measuring amps or current. If you don't know the magnitude of the of the current you're going to measure, always start from the largest, and that's 20 amps. Uh, see, there are both uh, DC and AC ranges of 20 amps. Uh, you, you measure large currents with it, but remember, they don't have electrical fuse in it, and it's very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Check the, uh, the current with these high ranges. If your current is less than 200 milliamps, so you're measuring this in this configuration, check the current. If the current is less than 200 milliamps, you can change it to uh, this configuration. In this configuration, you are measuring more precisely, but only currents up to 200 milliamps. Uh, this input has uh, electrical fuse of 200 milliamps, so if it gets burned, you can uh, change it. Uh, here you can see on the left side, here's a typical uh, electrical fuse on the cheap multimeter, cheap Chinese multimeter, and it looks cheap. And on the right, uh, you see, it looks more expensive and it is more expensive. There are much more protective devices on high-end multimeters, but this on the right costs about, uh, I don't know, two or three hundred times more than this on the left. But anyway, if you fry something, you can change this uh, a fuse. So remember, if you, you're not sure what current you are going to measure, always start with uh, the highest range and then go to the smaller one. If you are going to measure resistance, uh, how to remember how to measure resistance? It's not parallel, it's not in series, it's always on your chest. Why? Uh, always measure just a resistor, not a resistor 
in some circuit because uh, resistors in circuits can uh, can be measured very accurately because other devices around it affect its its resistance also uh, resistor must be unpowered and the most uh, prevalent uh, source of uh, damage to the multimeters is frying the multimeter uh, when measuring resistance when the device is powered up or the resistor has power on it. So only measure re resistors that are not powered. Uh, how this thing works? Well, in essence, every uh, multimeter is just a voltmeter. And uh, everything else is converted from resistance, current, AC voltage to DC voltage, and then measured. Uh, how you measure these resistors? Uh, in car, uh, current, uh, in uh, ohm, ohm meter mode, uh, multimeter produces some small current at the ends of uh, probes, uh, like one milliamp or ten milliamps, and it's fixed uh, current. It passes through um, unknown resistor, and you are actually measuring voltage on that resistor. This uh, current can't hurt you, but you have to know what's going on. Uh, that's what I also said. Uh, measuring ohms is same as measuring DC voltage. Just change position of range uh, dial. You have six ranges. So you can uh, measure very wide uh, range of resistances. Uh, 200 means you can measure up to 200 ohms. 20 M means you can measure 20 mega ohms. Uh, can you measure 200 ohms on that largest uh, range? Well, yes, but it won't be shown on your meter. So uh, always uh, measure values, resistors, voltages, current uh, nearest the uh, end of a range. So if we have, say, um, 18 kilo ohm uh, resistor, we are going to measure it at 20k range. And I showed here what changes at all these six ranges. Why is number one on uh, this multimeter and it's measuring nothing? Well, it does measure it measures resistance between these two probes. Resistance between two probes now is infinite. And infinite is very large. And I told you that one means over range. So it, he can't m measure infinite. Uh, you can see that uh, decimal point is changing its place depending on what range you're going to measure. Uh, also, it doesn't matter the orientation of probes when uh, measuring resistance, uh, but what is important? You can take resistor, measure it, and you, that's, this is the usual way how to measure uh, resistor. Put your fingers on there. You can't hurt yourself, but your body resistance will go in parallel to the resistor. When measuring small resistances like 100 ohms, 1K, it won't affect readout. But for larger resistors like uh, 2 or 20 mega ohms, your resistance, body resistance is around 1, 2 or 5 mega ohms and you'll get uh, error in, in the measurement. Also, I, there's a small uh, print there. Uh, resistors are um, very uh, changeable, 
are changing with temperature and their uh, their uh, their uh, resistance can change even if you just take it with your hand and you can measure it and you'll see how the resistance is going up or down depending on the type of the resistor but that's not very important to you but here's just so you can know that and here I'm measuring that resistor that was connected to that battery and it's around 800 ohms. So remember, measure it like this, never in the circuit, especially when it's powered. Uh, now we are going to change to AC current and voltage, but remember, Measuring AC is very dangerous. If you are not, you don't know what you're doing, don't, don't. Uh, you can get killed with uh, wrongly measuring AC mains or something like that, so be very careful. Uh, here's very short and uh, brief uh, preview of what's going on when measuring uh, AC voltages. DC is easy. DC uh, don't change over time. AC changes. And this is typical sine wave that changes through time. Uh, measuring it, for some reason it's shifted. Uh, measuring sine wave is uh, like DC, you can't do that. Why? Because in DC you are measuring average or mean value and mean value of uh, symmetrical sine wave is zero because you get uh, same amount above and same um, amount below zero reference. So in the sum you get what's the mean uh, value of uh, sine wave, it's zero. So you can't measure it like that. You're measuring something called uh, REMS or root mean square. That's all you have to know. Uh, so it's a bit different than DC. Uh, this measurement is usually uh, done just for a sine wave. Most of the cheaper multimeters can measure correctly just sine wave uh, uh, currents and voltages. Any other voltage, any other wave shape will get some error when measured. Because uh, your um, multimeter don't know uh, what's the wave shape of the measured uh, voltage. For that you need uh, oscilloscope. And here's a representation of some standard wave shapes. For a sine wave of amplitude of 1 volt, you will get a readout of 0.707 and that's okay. Uh, you don't uh, have a readout of amplitude on your multimeters. Multimeters always show REMS, root mean square. So if I uh, change to square wave, uh, calculated REMS is also one volt, don't ask why, but this is going to measure 1.1111. Uh, there's a, there's a 10, 11 percent error. That's not too much if you are not very picky, but it's an error. For triangle and so tooth waves, uh, you get also some small error. It may, might be critical, might not, depends what you are measuring. But I just want to tell you that you get some errors depend, depending on what you're going to measure. This applies only to, to this category? Yes. And I'm going to uh, answer your question with this ne next uh, point. Uh, true RMS uh, multimeters, and that means more expensive, can measure any type of uh, wave shape. Correct. Also, what, uh, and that's all you need to know, uh, modern uh, outer ranging uh, m several hundred dollars uh, 
priced uh, multimeters can measure through RMS. Again, I say it may be useful to you, maybe not, depends what you're going to do. Also, a uh, source of an error can be uh, DC voltage applied to AC. Uh, here you can see that sine wave is not uh, symmetrical anymore. It's shifted for a offset of DC voltage. And this regular uh, multimeters can't uh, correctly measure it. Uh, but true RMS multimeters can. I'm just throwing this stuff on you so you can be informed about it. So, finally, we are measuring AC, standard configuration of black and red uh, probes. You have uh, five ranges of voltage, AC voltage, and be careful. Uh, you can measure only up to 750 volts safely with this uh, specific voltmeter. Some say it's 600, some 1,000, depends on uh, multimeter. And here's uh, measuring AC mains. And um, you may presume you'll, you, you'll measure 220 volts. Well, that's not true. It was up until uh, 15 years ago, but today uh, 230 volts is uh, something you're expecting for your main out outlet. And we have about 4 volts more than needed. And I just connected parallel to mains. Be very careful when doing this. Especially with cheaper multimeters that are prone to breakage of probes and you don't want to touch any metal during this kind of measurements. Uh, for AC uh, currents, again, start from the highest range, test it for 20 amps. If it's less than 200 milliamps, you can switch to lower range. Again, uh, uh, current as small as 50 milliamps can kill you if it goes straight to your heart. So be very careful when measuring. Continuity. Well, that's popular with some people and it does this. Uh, actually, this is resistant, resistance measuring and it measures if the resistance is less than 50 or 20 ohms. And that's considered short circuit. So if you are uh, checking if ends of this, these two things are not connected, but it's not very uh, conducting. Uh, but if I connect this, I get a beep. Beep means you have a short circuit. But short circuit is not zero. It's anything be below 50 or 20 ohms, depending on a voltmeter. You can trace uh, when you use it. If you have a connector with, I don't know, three ends, uh, uh, you have to check which is broken so you can connect one probe to one and other probe to other end and check every pin. And if some pin is in uh, breakage, you can find what's wrong with it. Uh, this is maybe too much uh, for you, but uh, let's skip. Uh, one thing is important to remember, never uh, measure continuity when the device is powered. Always switch off the voltage to the because it's the same thing as measuring resistors. You can fry your multimeter if it's powered. So if you are measuring something in your uh, power supply unit, switch it off first. 
and I measured uh, this piece of wire and it show, showed it's zero millivolts so it means it's about zero ohms and that's okay because short piece of wire has very small resistance. It's not zero actually, it's somewhere about um, several milli ohms but that's very hard to measure. Diodes. Uh, if, you, if you know what diode is, it's an electrical component that passes current from one to other side only if uh, correctly uh, polarized. If reverse, if, if polarization is reversed, it's uh, cutting off the uh, current. Several types of uh, diodes can be tested and here's a list of silicon, germanium, Schottky and if you don't know what those are doesn't matter. Uh, just uh, diodes have a voltage drop on them when they are passing the current. And that voltage drop is dependent on what type of diode is. Uh, you can test LEDs, but uh, not all LEDs can be tested with this plain uh, multimeter. Uh, some modern, like white light uh, white uh, LEDs uh, need some special uh, multimeters that can test such things. Uh, so you have to switch to that leftmost position to test uh, diodes. It's the same position as a continuity test. Uh, probes are the same as for uh, voltage measurement and this is a diode, how it looks in schematics. Uh, if positive voltage is on the right anode and negative on a cathode, it's a, it's a state when a uh, diode is passing the uh, current. If you reverse the polarity, uh, the diode will cut off and won't pass any current. And here's the representation. You see, uh, anode uh, is on the positive side and cathode is on negative side. It's passing the current and we are measuring voltage drop on it. It's about 0.5 volts and that's okay. So this diode is okay. Uh, if I reverse now the diode, it will show over range so it can't pass any current and that means that's okay. If something is shown in this state that means that diode is broken. Uh, you can measure transistors in this way uh, because transistor can be, uh, can be shown as uh, two diodes connected and this is what I mean. Uh, NPN and PNP uh, bipolar transistors can be tested like diodes. And so uh, if I, for NPN, if I put positive end on base and negative on collector, I'll get a readout of a uh, passing uh, diode. If I change negative to emitter, then again it will pass the current. If I reverse it, put a negative on base and positive on collector, it should read not passing uh, current. And in this way you can test any transistor, bipolar transistor if it's working. Uh, most of the cheap uh, multimeters have uh, uh, transistor AHFE or beta or gain measuring and that's this little slot here with several pins in it, pin slots. Uh, that's not really very uh, useful for most of you because um, only some very specific analog designs need uh, uh, determination of a gain factor of a transistor. Uh, how it's used? Well, you have first to know uh, 
pin out of a transistor emitter basin uh, collector. Put transistor in PNP or NPN slot. Put emitter to M A base to B collector to C. You see that slot for uh, transistor. Change the dial to HF uh, There's a small transistor in it, and it sh it reads 168. That's the amplification factor of this transistor. And anything be between 150 and 800 means the transistor is okay. And to most of you, it won't mean anything other than that that's not burned transistor that it's actually working okay. Uh, frequency. Frequency is a useful thing to measure. You have a relatively small, uh, uh, s small uh, range of, of uh, measuring frequencies up to 200 hertz, kilohertz on this multimeter. Some high end can measure up to two megahertz, but uh, oscilloscope is much better tool to measure these things, but it can be still very useful. So uh, put uh, probes like in for um, measuring voltage, change dial to uh, 20 or 200 kilohertz. Of course, if you are measuring up to 20 kilohertz, you'll get more precise, more decimal points than on 200 kilohertz range. And you can see that you can't measure very low frequencies with it. And here's a generator of 5 kilohertz signal, and I'm measuring 5.07. Uh, the source is 5.02, that's about 5% uh, uh, error, and, uh, and that's okay. Uh, uh, measuring frequencies is not uh, very accurate with this small, cheap, uh, cheaper multimeters, but still can be useful. Uh, you have to check uh, specifications of every multimeter what's the maximum voltage and what's the minimum voltage that you can uh, measure. You can measure uh, up to 20, 200 kilohertz, but uh, you must think what's the amplitude of that signal that I'm uh, measuring. You can't measure 1,000 volt signal. That would be bad. Uh, measuring capacitance. Uh, also, this is not very spectacular. You have special uh, meters like LCR, LCR meters uh, for measuring capacitance, but it's useful for most of the applications. Uh, but errors are quite large and can be up to 10%. Uh, when measuring capacitance, you don't need probes. There are two slots in this multimeter and there's where you put pins of your condenser. Switch it to capacitance range that you are wanting to measure and here's a small 10 nanofarad capacitor being measured and it says 10.2 nanofarads and that's okay it's under specifications. If I'm going to measure some larger capacitor, like one uh, microfarad, I'll switch it to next larger uh, uh, range of 20 microfarads. Uh, modern modern uh, multimeters nowadays are, are out of ranging. They're more uh, expensive and easier to use. What's changed? You still have this dial, but you don't have to change from uh, ranges under one function. You just select what you're going to measure. 
in this case DC voltage on this battery and it will show 9.39 volts without you changing the ranges from 1000 volts to 200 to 20 or so. It automatically does, does that for you. Uh, but observe uh, the result is same as this 25 or 6 uh, years old multimeter. This also showed 9.39 volts. So, and this one costs about $800. So that's. No? Uh, on AC, no, 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 no. But uh, most of the time you're going to measure DC. If you're going to uh, measure AC most of the time, then you need oscilloscope or something more bigger. But still. Uh, uh, and there are some, uh, these are some examples of uh, uh, outer ranging multimeters. Uh, they have a bunch of all other uh, functions you don't have to know about right now. Uh, so you j just change the function and all other arranging is done automatically. But if you know to use this manual arranging, this will be a breeze to learn. Few things about accuracy and precision. Uh, most people think that accuracy is the same thing as precision, but no. Uh, if you are measuring something accurately and precisely, it means you are hitting just the bullseye. Uh, something can be very precise, but can be inaccurate. What that means? Precise means grouping around one exact uh, value. And that means that uh, the error is always the same. If I going to measure one volt and get 1.1 every time, that's not uh, accurate but is precise. Also, I can uh, measure uh, accurately but imprecise. Accurately means that you're measuring around uh, the correct value. But uh, the error is not always the same. So I'm measuring one volt and I get 1.01, 1.02, 1 1.3. So the error uh, is changing, but the uh, ac but it's still accurate. And last example is something is imprecise and inaccurate. Uh, so the uh, values are all over the range when measuring. Uh, why is that important? Because when you're uh, reading a data sheet for a multimeter when buying one, uh, you get uh, something like this specification, uh, number of uh, uh, percent, percentage of reading of on B range plus C dig digits. What that means? Well, uh, this uh, multimeter, its data sheet says it has an error 0.3% plus two digits, accuracy for all uh, DC ranges. Uh, that means if I'm going to measure 15 volts, uh, maximal error. It's not always the maximum. That, that, that's the worst case. Uh, you get 0.3% uh, maximal uh, error and that's 45 millivolts and two, two, two digits accuracy or one digit uh, means that uh, it should say plus one not plus two okay but okay. Uh, one last digit on 20 volts range is 10 millivolts so in total the worst case error is 55 millivolts if I'm going to and that means that if I'm going to measure on this multimeter 15 volts, the real uh, value is somewhere between these values. That means an error. Uh, no measuring device 
uh, can measure without some error. And you always have to know what that error is. More expensive have uh, less error, error and etc. Uh, if I'm going to uh, say um, measure 15 volts at 200 volts range, I'll get much higher uh, error. And that's 145 millivolts. So that's why you, you are always have to uh, measure at uh, the right range. 15 volts measure at 220 volt range, not 200,000, to get most accurate readout. Uh, also, uh, you can get uh, three and a half uh, digit uh, multimeters, but they some can. This this one has 0.3 percent. Uh, Ch cheap Chinese uh, multimeters have much higher error, but still same number of digits, three and a half. And that's what's changed in price. Uh, let's say you're buying some cheap but very nice looking uh, multimeter that says it has four and, uh, and a half digits. So it can display one, nine, 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 point five percent error. 0.5% at 2 volt range means 10 millivolts. And uh, that means that the last two digits that you're, that you're going to have uh, your readout on your multimeter are just pure fiction. They mean nothing. So be careful when buying stuff like this. Uh, this is just a, a little schematic to show what's going with um, ranging. Ranging is, as I said, uh, inside this device is a small digital multimeter that measures to some specific uh, voltage up to 200 millivolts. So any other voltage must be scaled down so it can measure uh, such small, small voltage. So you see if I'm measuring voltages up to 200 millivolts, it goes directly to your chip. Uh, if I'm going to measure 2 volts, first I have to divide it by 10 and measure it. If I measure, if I divide the uh, voltages up to 2 volts by 10, I get 200 millivolts, etc. High voltages have 10,000 scale down factor. Uh, the most accurate readout is at that basic uh, range. Uh, any other measurement like resistance, AC, uh, capacitance, uh, need to have a conver conversion from that value to DC and introduces some error. So you get uh, idea that uh, any other measurement than DC, you'll get some more uh, error than the, the, that stated 0.3%. For, say, 20 AC current range, you get 3% error, and that's large. This means that uh, something that may affect your uh, measurements Every uh, this one has uh, 10 mega ohm input resistance. That's what is seen by a source that you are measuring. Uh, cheaper uh, <coughs> cheaper multimeters have lower resistance, and it it can affect your measurement. Here's how: you get a voltage divider. Uh, you are, you are actually lowering the voltage that you are uh, measuring. If you have high input resistance, that error is very, very small. Uh, analog multimeters have um, uh, smaller uh, input resistance and introduce much larger error, for instance. Safety. Uh, Cheap multimeters like those cheap Chinese uh, can get uh, easily broken 
and these probes are very poor, poor quality and it can be damaged and that's not very safe when you are measuring AC voltages. So, and if you are going to do something wrong with it, it will most uh, surely explode or just malfunction. Uh, uh, more, more expensive multimeters have a variety of safety uh, measures built in, so that's something you have to think about. These are some typical uh, cheap multimeters. Observe, we had uh, at the start uh, very expensive fluke Mo uh, uh, multimeter and this is cheap Chinese fluke and you see there, there's a fluke original fluke on the left side uh, analog multimeters those are the things with scale uh, it's electromechanical device and uh, it's somewhat uh, more hard to use for novice Here's uh, measuring 9 volt battery. Ranges are the same, almost the same as uh, at a digital multimeter. But what you have to know is to read this scale. And you'll see a bunch of numbers here. Uh, first, you decide what you're going to measure. Uh, you have a separate scale for voltage and current. And depending on what range you are going to measure, you see, you have ranges 1,500, 250, and etc. And you, you look at what uh, value you're going to read out. So, if you are going to measure 500 volts, 50 is the number of these marks that's very useful. So, when needle uh, shows 50 uh, marks, that means five, uh, 500 volts if you're measuring at 500 volts range. Uh, so you just scale that number of marks to that voltage or any value that you're measuring. Uh, AC has separate scale, red one. Uh, and uh, resistance is another separate uh, scale and it goes in reverse. On the left, it's not zero, it's rather infinite infinity and on the far right it's zero ohms. That's because you're measuring actually current. Uh, device passes current through a resistor and uh, current is zero when you are measuring very large infinite uh, resistor and because that it's on the left. When you are measuring maximum current resistance is then considered very low or zero. That's because it's on the right side. Uh, one of the specifics for uh, measuring uh, resistance with analog is that before any measurement, you have to short probes and there's a small um, uh, potential meter on the side or on top of uh, a multimeter and you see here it's not exactly zero you have to move this needle to show zero and you, then you'll have uh, with this uh, regulation, uh, regulation uh, and only then you'll get accurate readout everything other is the same uh, there's also a mirror on the some old uh, analog multimeters uh, it's useful to get more precise readout, uh, you have to look at the uh, mirror from above and reflection in mirror must uh, be overlapped with the needle and then you are looking at just a right angle. Uh, why are analog multimeters uh, useful? Well, they have low resist input resistance and that's useful when uh, measuring some uh, lines with uh, parasitic, parasitic induction uh, doesn't matter. Uh, but what is interesting, most of the analog uh, multimeters can measure uh, voltage and current without any batteries. That's because a small amount of 
uh, current is being stolen from the value that you are measuring and needle is uh, moving by this small resist uh, current. Only when you are measuring uh, uh, resistance you have to put some batteries in it so it will be a source for current that makes voltage drop on the resistor and that's it